So today uh, we're going to be talking about factors to consider when we um, are looking to go to Galapagos or plan for our clients between land or island hopping versus a cruise. So there's a lot of different factors that we have to take into account and that's what we're going to review today. Let me just see here. And of course, remember um, for all the new members that have just uh, signed in, we're gonna be using our chat box and our members will be able to respond to any of your questions. And we'll summarize at the end as well. So my name is Katie and it's really nice to be here with all of you. And um, if you weren't here on Tuesday, we reviewed uh, the different islands and um, some of the questions that we should ask our clients before they travel. So if you weren't here, um, that's okay. At the end of our webinars, we're going to send you a, um, a recording of the entire webinar and a PDF. So you'll be able to have all the information that we've already reviewed. So don't feel like you're missing out, just in case. So once again, um, thank you for confirming sound was an okay. Um, I like to do an icebreaker with everybody and maybe you, um, some of our teammates can start first and they can tell us where they're joining us from and maybe what their favorite spot has been in quarantine. Um, maybe Jasmine or Joa, you could join. Hi, can you hear me? Hi, Jasmine. Good morning. Hello. I can hear you. Yes. So my favorite spot was actually my terrace. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Grab some sun. <laughs> and when um, when quarantine is over, what is the first place? Where is the first place you want to go? Um, somewhere in nature, because all our parks are closed within Quito as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we are pretty much condemned to the streets when walking in the streets or the terrace or the, the garden. So, yeah, I would love to go outside into nature, into, yeah, some place north. Yeah, me too. I think my kids really want to get out of the house. I think where the first trip we're going to be planning is to go to Chimborazo. Um, we've been to Cotopaxi and Quilotoa, but they really love the mountains and they really want to go to Chimborazo. So I think that's what's on our list um, when we're finally great. able to travel again. That's great to know. <laughs> Hi, Joa. Hello. Hi, Katie. Good I'm morning. sorry about Good morning. I was already connected, but I just lost my connection. So I'm back right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hear that you are uh, talking about what are you going to do after the quarantine and also how, what's your favorite place in your house, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. For example, in my case, um, you already know that I love bike. So the first thing I want to do is to take my bike and go to the mountains. Um, for example, to Cotopaxi, you know, uh, it's like to go all the way down and mm -hmm. feel the adrenaline, feel myself alive again. Because <laughs> right now it's like since we are in, in, in home, you know, we are taking advantage to uh, spend more time with the family. Uh, some, 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 some ones are also like training themselves. Uh, but yeah, you need something more. And, and yeah, I remain positive that everything is going to be over and we're going to have the chance again to go. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Joa, for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think that, uh, yeah, the favorite spot in my, ha in my house, I think it's my, my, my room. It's not actually just because I have my bed there and I can sleep. <laughs> not just because of that but it is it is more because uh uh there it's like uh i have enough space like to train uh to put music you know without any interruption so that is why i, I think i love it and um yeah uh, something else is that i i i live like in kind of a hill so from here what i really love is to to wake up in the mornings um, and uh, have uh, an amazing view with the Cayambe volcano, Antisana, and Cotopaxi. Mm -hmm. So that is something great. So 
normally I take a cup of coffee um, on, the, on the stairs to see those volcanoes. So that's really nice. Oh, that's really nice. I can yes. see Pichincha from my house. It's really, oh, really? clear. Yeah, and sometimes really? there's snow on it. So it's nice to wake up and see that in the morning. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, and, and that should be happening like if those days because we are having some cold days here in, in mm -hmm. Quito. Great. Thank you, Joa. Is there anybody else who would like to share what their favorite thing is um, during quarantine or where they'd like to go first after quarantine is over? You can write it in the chat as well. It's okay. Wait a few seconds. All right, well, that's okay. We can talk about it when we're on the phone traveling your next uh, program for guests. So let's begin. Um, so today we're gonna take about another like 25 to 30 minutes and we're going to do a refresh on the Galapagos, um, not like on Tuesday, but more about um, the islands and the island hopping. So we're going to talk about the island hopping and a typical day on a cruise. And then we're going to go into the main factors to consider when you're planning a Galapagos trip for your client. So to begin, this is the refresher for the Galapagos. You see here a map uh, for the Galapagos Islands. And something really important that we always like to uh, tell our guests or um, our clients is that it's really important to remember the distance between the three main islands of Isabela, Santa Cruz, and San Cristobal. So you can see here that the distance in between, for example, San Cristobal and Santa Cruz is about two and a two and two and a two and two and a half hours. <laughs> Sorry. And it's about 114 kilometers or 70 miles. And then we've got um, between Santa Cruz and Isabela, it's another two and a half hours, give or take. And it's about 102 kilometers or 63 miles. So the distance is actually quite large. Um, and I feel like the maps of Galapagos are very deceiving because it looks like they're close together, but they're really not, okay? And it's also important to remember that um, the Galapagos Islands are 18% land and the rest is a marine reserve. And that 18% of the land is actually able to fit into the state of Mississippi or the country of Greece. So it's quite a bit of land mass that we're dealing with when we work with Galapagos. Um, so now when we talk about island hopping, um, there's different ways to travel. And there are two main um, ways to do this. So there's transfers via speedboat and there's also flights. They're called MTV flights. And as you can see in the picture, let me get my laser pointer so I can help. <laughs> Here is the plane that is used by the MTV. Now it's not a very large plane, um, very few passengers in here and flights are always subject to availability. So it's better to book in advance. And they do not fly directly from, let's say, Isabela to Santa, San Cristobal. They always stop in between at Santa Cruz. And the same thing goes for the speedboats. So when we're using a speedboat, they have uh, set schedules. They leave either in the morning or in the afternoon. And in the morning, they usually leave around 7 and in the afternoon or 2.30, 3 o'clock. It depends. So it's always good to check on, on availability. <clears throat> now, also with the transfers, it's important to remember that there's no way to take a direct transfer on a speedboat from, let's say, again, Isabela to San Cristobal or vice versa. They always stop in between a Santa Cruz just because the distance is too long. So departure times are always going to vary. It depends um, on everybody getting there in time. Um, let's say that Galapagos is a place where they're on island time. So they try to stick the, to the best that they can to the schedules, but always um, let your clients know that times when you're doing island hopping will vary. And the distances again are two, two to two and a half hours. 
So we're gonna continue now to the main islands that we use for island hopping. And then later on, we'll get into the main factors to consider when, we're, when we wanna choose an island hopping program or a cruise program. So let's go island hopping. So we're gonna start from the east and work our way to the west. We're gonna start with the easternmost island, San Cristobal. Here we have an airport and they arrive into Puerto Bacarizo Moreno. And there's about five different visitor sites on San Cristobal itself. <clears throat> uh, the northernmost part of San Cristobal has Punta Pit. It takes about one and a half hours to get there by speedboat. So this can vary depending on weather and water and currents. So we could say about an hour to an hour and a half. This is a guided visit only. And the unique thing about Punta Pit is that you can see all three uh, boobies, the Nazca red and blue footed boobies, and it has a really unique landscape. Uh, and it's important to mention that when we're doing island hopping, um, <clears throat> you can either be picked up by uh, the guys or the transfer at your hotel where you're staying, or you can meet at the pier, we like to always um, tell our clients and tell our guests that uh, it's good to be flexible for island hopping. So if your transfer uh, says 6.30 pickup, sometimes they might get there at 6.45. And that's because normally they're picking up other passengers along the way in the same transfer and then dropping them off all at the same time at the pier to be picked up into their speedboat. And that's where you go with a group, everybody else who's joining the tour and the guide is with the speedboat. And then you travel there. And when you're doing island hopping uh, visits, you always have, normally you always have lunch included. We'll always specify in our programs and itineraries. And you're always with the guide. And when you do an island hopping program, you may not be with the same people each day and you may not be with the same guide. Guides may change and people will change and you may not use the same speedboat as well. So I just wanted to mention that before I continue. So continuing on, on San Cristobal, we have uh, another visitor site, which is uh, not needed with a guide. You can go there yourself, take a taxi to the highlands, about 20 to 25 minutes. And here we have the Galapagera Breeding Center. You can see Galapagos tortoises in a semi-wild habitat. And inside you can see the different stages of the breeding. Um, you can see the stages of the tortoises and eggs or just recently hatched or a little bit more mature. So it's really interesting to see the process and how they do this. And then of course, there's El Junco Lagoon also. You can take a taxi up to the trailhead and then start walking and a guide is needed. Another visit uh, on San Cristobal is Isla Lobos and there's a really nice beach here. It's a self-guided trail. It takes about 30 minutes and you don't need a guide. And it's a really nice hiking trail. You can see the beautiful landscapes as pictured. Um, it's a really nice beach and it's called Isla Lobos because there's a lot of sea lions or lobos marinos. And uh, the other visitor site that we have here um, that leaves from San Cristobal is Española Island. Now there's something really special about this island and it's because they have um, an endemic wildlife here called the waved albatross. When we're planning an island hopping tour, it is really important to remember that Española Island is quite far away from San Cristobal. It takes about three and a half hours to get there. So you're think in a speedboat that fits about 16 to 18 passengers, it's not very big, it's small, it's not as stable on the water, and you're basically going through open water to get to Española, so it can be choppy, um, depending on times of years, the water is a little bit more, uh, um, there's a lot more movement compared to other times of the years where the currents are strong. So for example, um, we only suggest this visit if the passengers are saying, we absolutely want to see the waved albatross. If not, we don't, we try not to suggest it because when you're doing an island hopping, you have a lot more limited time because you're spending more time in transit. You're spending more time in the speedboats, arriving to the visit, 
And then you also have to take into account the time that it takes back. So it's not only three and a half hours in total, but it's about seven hours on open water on a speedboat that's going up and down, up and down, up and down. And people do get seasick. So this is important to keep in mind if someone's doing an island hopping tour just because they don't want to do a cruise because they get seasick. So that's something to keep in mind. And also the last point that's really important to remember is when you're planning an Española island hopping visit, you have to make sure that they have already the tour opened. So it's not always available because they need a minimum amount of passengers to be able to operate. So that makes it a little bit tricky to, to book sometimes. So we're gonna move over now to Santa Cruz. This is a central island of uh, the Galapagos. And it's one of the most popular ones and where most people arrive um, to do an island hopping program. And usually it's for an island hopping program that's about five to six days. There's about nine different visitor sites here. And the airport is actually located on Baltra Island. If you see here in the picture, it's this island next to the laser. So you have to actually get a transfer in and when you do the transfer in normally you stop at the highlands so this is a really great visit to do on your way in once you've arrived so it's important to tell your passenger you know come prepared with your hiking boots already on and long pants because in the highlands it can rain sometimes um, it dries up really fast and it doesn't rain for long periods of time but it can be wet it can be humid um, <clears throat> so it's important to have them dress prepared and appropriately. So we do this visit on the way in and you can have lunch in the highlands, you can um, do the lava tunnels as well and there's no minimum packs needed here. Uh, we can do this privately or we can do it in a group also. Next we have Santa Fe. So all of our island hopping programs, except for the highlands, uh, have a snorkeling activity included. So you always have a land visit plus a snorkel activity. So they, we always need to let our guests know that they should come prepared with their bathing suits and towels and things like that. So a speedboat ride to Santa Fe is about one and a half hours, give or take. Also remember that times are never um, exact when we're doing island hopping. So this is a guided visit and it's done in a group, so there's no minimum passengers needed. There's one main trail that loops around, takes you to a cliff, you get to see the endemic land iguanas and the opuntai cactus. Continuing on, um, all of these visits here are based out of San Santa Cruz. Now you may leave uh, for these visits from Puerta Yora, which is the main port of Santa Cruz, or we may have to travel all the way back up to the Itabaca Channel where you're crossing when you come in from the airport due to the location that you're going for that day. So for example, when you're doing Bartolome Island in Sullivan Bay, Sullivan Bay is right here, okay? And all of this island is Bartol Bartolome. Um, you're going to be leaving from the northern point of Santa Cruz. So we have to travel again through the highlands and that's where they take you to the pier. And I mentioned that because sometimes after the program guests will be like, well, how come we didn't just leave from Puerta Yota? Why did I have to wake up so early and cross all the way over again Santa Cruz and through the highlands? And that's because of it's just easier to get to Bartolome. And of course there's park authority rules and things like that. So we have to follow the regulations and so do the operators. So this uh, speedboat ride is about two hours. It's a guided visit. We do snorkeling here um, in the shore or swimming. And we also do a panga ride depending on the operator and depending on time. You get to see Pinnacle Rock and, the, and really great snorkeling with Galapagos penguins. And sometimes there might even be hammerhead sharks. <clears throat> so this island here is South Plaza's and Carrion Point. Carrion Point is where you do the snorkeling. South Plaza is a, is a really beautiful island and the contrast of the red Sesuvian plants is just really beautiful against the colors of the sky and the blue waters. And then you have the Opuntia cactus forest as well. So this is another guided visit. Uh, it's not very far from Santa Cruz. It's about an hour, give or take. 
And North Seymour is uh, personally one of my favorite islands. Um, it's about 45 minutes, um, depending from where you leave from on Santa Cruz. It's not very far. And this is another guided visit. And the great thing about this, the highlight is that it's a nesting site for the blue-footed boobies and the uh, frigate birds or magnif ma magnificent frigate birds. Sorry, I'm having a hard time talking today. Um, it's a really beautiful island. It's full of these birds. They're just flying all over the place and they're nesting. So you get to see um, during certain times of years the, the nesting sites where the birds are right there on top of their eggs or there's already hatchlings. And it's just a mix of these birds that normally don't get along together, but there they are nesting together and raising their babies. So it's really interesting to see. And then on the other side of the island, when you go around the loop, there's a really nice beach with a lookout to Daphne uh, Island in the background. So it's a really interesting site. And the snorkeling here is really great. Also, you snorkel along a reef and sometimes you get to see sharks and all kinds of different tropical fish. Another visit um, that's not too popular, but it is an option um, that we provide is Chinese Hat. And the reason it's called Chinese hat is because of the shape um, or sombrero chino, that it's also a popular, popular name for it. It's about an hour speedboat ride. It's a guided visit and it's a really unique landscape. And uh, continuing, we have Pinsong Island. This is a really nice place to go that has really clear waters. There's sea lions that are really playful. Of course, it's also mentioned, uh, good to mention to your clients that wildlife is never guaranteed. You can say you have the opportunity to see them and there may be playful sea lions and things like that, but you never wanna say you will see them. So we have to remember that these are wild animals. Um, they come and go as they please and they're not rehearsed whatsoever. Okay, and this is um, one of the last visits on Santa Cruz. It's a nice visit because you can go there without a guide. You can walk um, from the trailhead. So you would take a taxi um, from Puerta Yora, and when you get to the trailhead, you sign in just like at any other national park. You sign your name, and then it's a really nice uh, cobblestone path. Um, it's fairly even, so it's nice to walk through. Um, and it takes about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on your pace walking through. And it's nice to walk through to the beach because you're going through this, um, through a Scalesia forest. So you'll see Galapagos tortoises and lava lizards. You'll probably see a lot of finches um, or yellow warblers or small little yellow birds. And then as soon as you get to the beach, it just opens up into this long, white, sanded, beautiful beach like out of a book. And it's just beautiful. And if you keep walking all along the beach, you'll come to this back part here. And the water is a lot calmer in here. Um, sometimes you'll find people renting snorkel equipment and kayaks. So it's a really nice place to go. And if you're too tired at the end of the day to walk back, there's a ferry at 4 p.m that costs $10 to take the passengers back to Puerta Yora. That way we don't have to walk all the way back. And Charles Darwin, um, this is an easy walk in Puerta Yora. If you're in the center of Puerta Yora at the pier, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to walk to the station. It's a really nice place that you can go without a guide. Um, and there are some nice beaches that you can stop at along the way, like Playa Estación. You might see some locals here swimming on their days off or kids that are out of school, but you're more than welcome to join them. <laughs> you can always tell your passengers that. And um, the Charles Darwin station has um, hours throughout the day, but they're open till about four in the afternoon. And something that's not necessarily uh, a visit, but something more interesting to see um, that you would like to tell your clients is that there's a fisherman's market in Port Yora. So this is really interesting to see. Um, it's kind of funny to watch how the animals are around the fishermen and then sometimes they have their favorite sea lion there who's always begging for snacks. So it's really interesting to see their catch of the day and how they um, prepare it for the restaurants right there in Puerto Rico. So you know you're always eating fresh. And it's just a really fun activity to watch in the morning if you're a morning person. So we're gonna move on to Isabella Island. Um, pictured here are Los Tunales. 
Um, Isabella is one of our favorite islands to offer for island hopping. Um, when we're doing an island hopping program, you know, most people um, want to go and they want to get the most that they can for their dollars. So Isabella is a really great place to go because it has all kinds of different activities. And the first here is Concha y Perla Cove. So you don't need a guide to do this visit. And it's when someone has free time, this is something that I like to suggest to them. Uh, they can rent some snorkels and some fins or they can just go to have a swim. Uh, it's really calm water. So if someone, it's great for someone who's not as comfortable in water, but they still wanna get the experience of snorkeling and seeing lots of tropical fish. Um, here, uh, I've been here personally and I was able to see sea turtles and manta rays. There are some sea lions playing around. So uh, it's actually quite deep. So around the edges here is, is best for those who don't like deep water. Uh, and I would suggest um, you telling your clients to bring some water shoes because there's a lot of coral and sharp shells and things like that. But it's a really great snorkeling activity. So we have the wetlands on Isabella. Now the wetlands are composed of a bunch of different trails put together. So we have um, an option of doing this either walking or biking. You can do it with a guide um, and there's some parts that you can also do on your own on a self-guided trail. So we have a flamingo, flamingo lagoon, we have the Wall of Tears, which is a really interesting um, human history on the island when it used to be a penal colony. And there's lots of beaches on the trails and the best is to do it by bike. That way you don't wear yourself out and it doesn't um, take the entire day and you still have the afternoon to enjoy something else. And we have Los Tunales. We go here by speedboat. Uh, it's a not a very long ride, um, depending on what you're they're looking at or if they're taking their time. It could take about 30 minutes or maybe a little bit more. It is a guided visit, and it's just a really amazing landscape to the way that the islands are formed, and it's really great snorkeling. And this activity can be done either in the morning or in the afternoon. So the great thing about Isabella is that you have all these different activities, and they don't take up the whole entire day. So the same day, we could do Los Tunales, and we could also do here Tintoreras. So Tintoreras has really great kayaking opportunities. So maybe if your clients aren't so into snorkeling or swimming, you can offer them a kayaking option. And of course, there's also an option to do snorkeling. This is a guided tour. And again, it's about 30 to 40 minutes on speedboat. And of course, the famous Sierra Negra. This is a different viewpoint than what I had on Tuesday. Um, this is, it says here, pick up with IH. That means pick up with island hopping. So this is a guided tour. Um, and sometimes they do it with cruises as well. So when you're on a cruise and they do Sierra Negra, they will include transportation. So um, this is best to be, well, you have to do it in the morning. And when you're doing island hopping, they normally begin around seven in the morning. And we do not suggest doing Sierra Negra on the same day that they want to return to Santa Cruz, just because the transfers um, from Isabella usually leave around 2.45 or three. And there's just not enough time for you to return from Sierra Negra in order to make it to the transfer. It's possible, but we don't recommend it because then sometimes for any reason um you know taking a little bit longer than normal or just transit um things that you cannot control we don't want the passengers to miss their transfer and end up missing their flight the next day or anything like that so it's always best to do sierra negra when you have nothing planned for the rest of the day and you're planning on staying the night once again at isabella okay so we went through all of the different island hopping um, op uh, options and right now what I'm going to do is give you an example so that you can have an idea of a, one of our five day and eight day island hopping programs. So the five day program is the shortest possible program. I would never suggest um, to offer a four day program because you spend two days in transit arriving to Galapagos and then the fourth day leaving Galapagos. So you only have two days to really enjoy and I don't think it's enough really to to enjoy the best that you can, um, making it worth it going to Galapagos. So the five-day island hopping program includes Santa Cruz and Isabella. 
what we do is on their arrival to Beltra, we do the transfer in with the Highlands visit and the lava tunnels. We can include lunch or if um, they prefer not to, that's fine as well. And then we bring them to their hotel afterwards and they stay the night in Puerto Ayora on Santa Cruz. So the second day will be any of the day tours that are available that I explained before on Santa Cruz. They'll spend another night there and then in the morning transfer to Isabella. So it's about two to two and a half hours. And I would suggest that they do tintoreras in the afternoon. In the morning of the next day, I would suggest either the wetlands or Los Tunales, one or the other. And then in the afternoon, they would come back to Santa Cruz and spend the night there. And then the following day have a transfer to the airport for their departing flight. So the reason we do this, for example, number four, and have the transfer back to Santa Cruz the day before they leave, is because we don't want to risk having a transfer in the morning back to Santa Cruz and have them miss their flight for any delays of any reason. So um, it is possible. Uh, we've done this before in extreme cases where they absolutely say, no, my flight is leaving really late, so I have time in the morning. So that's one of the options that we can do that. But again, we don't like to rush our passengers. We want them to enjoy their time and make sure that everything goes smoothly. So we do our best to avoid that. So here's our eight day island hopping program. And this is including all three of the main island hopping islands. So you would arrive to San Cristobal, do a day tour there the following day and spend the night one, once more. And then in the morning have a transfer to Santa Cruz. And then there, since we have so many options for passengers to do what they'd like on their own free time, they can visit the Charles Darwin station, go to Tortuga Bay, Las Grietas, so we have a free afternoon that they can kind of ease into the activities. And on day four, we'll do a day tour of Santa Cruz and the following day do a transfer to Isabella and once more the same explanation. They can do tintoreras or another activity in the afternoon. Sierra Negra has to be done in the morning, so we can't do that in the afternoon, like on the first day. And um, afterwards they have the afternoon free once they're done Sierra Negra. So it's a, a time consuming hike and it's very dry and hot. So I might suggest that they do snorkeling in Concha y Perla on their own free time. And then the next day we'll do another activity in the morning and have an afternoon transfer back to Santa Cruz. And on the last day, day eight, have a transfer in the morning to the airport. So that's base, the basic scheme of the island hopping programs and how you can have an idea how to set it up and how we can help you. So continuing, um, we talked a lot about uh, island hopping, so now let's talk about the cruise. Uh, cruises for arriving and departing, you'll arrive at the airport and it depends on which cruise you're, um, we're going to confirm, but normally there's a pickup at the gate with the guide and the crew or you meet them at the pier um, on Baltra or at Itavaca Channel. So these are always things that we're going to advise in time and um, we need to confirm upon making the booking. So it's important to know that sometimes passengers will already be in the Galapagos. So they need to know where the cruise begins. And sometimes they like to book their own flights. And um, so that's why it's important to realize that there's two different airports in the Galapagos. And knowing what the first activity is, is also important as well, in case they're doing an activity such as the Highlands that I mentioned before. So this is what a typical day on a cruise looks like. Um, once you're on the cruise, uh, you're waking up in the morning and you have breakfast and you're gonna get a briefing from the guide and you do your first morning visit. Uh, there's normally snorkeling once or twice a day, and uh, that's either done after the first morning activity or after the afternoon activity. And then we'll have lunch. There's another briefing from the guide. You'll have a little bit of free time, and then the afternoon activity is done. The reason that cruises are so set on one schedule is because um, they have a specific time during the day to visit the land sites. So the park authorities of the Galapagos, since it is a national park, allow visits from, from a certain set of time. And we have to remember that there's also other cruises. Now, when you're on a cruise, it's not gonna feel 
like you're surrounded by other cruise boats, they actually have all the itineraries organized so that it actually feels like you're there by yourself. So you might run into one or two other boats, but never any more than that. And then once again, in the afternoon activity, either snorkel then or it was in the morning, you'll have dinner and then always a briefing for the next day. So here we are to the main factors to consider when we wanna decide if we should offer an island hopping or a cruise. So let's go over these. The wildlife factor. This is important to know because lots of people visit the Galapagos just to see the animals. So on a cruise, you're gonna have much greater wildlife exposure and island hopping less. And that's just due to the time that you're spent uh, in transit, um, going to each day tour while on a cruise, most of the time they travel overnight so they can have more visitor sites in a less amount of time. And also get to the islands that are farthest away like Genovesa and Fernandina. The range of visits and more visitor sites like I just mentioned um, is something to consider because when you're doing island hopping, uh, you have more multi-sport adventure opportunities and the activities could be either both sea-based and land-based, okay? Um, island hopping, you also have an opportunity to do a lot more diving. When you're on a cruise, you either do a naturalist cruise where you do the typical layout that I mentioned before or you do a diving cruise, okay? So there's cruises that are specific for diving. Um, on cruises, sometimes kayaking will be more available than it is for island hopping. When you do island hopping, most of the sites, unless you're on East Avella, are not going to offer a kayaking opportunity. And with island hopping, you're already on land. So if you're based on Santa Cruz or East Avella, you have a lot more time to do hiking and land visits. While on a cruise, you have a certain amount of time when the, finally the guide says, okay, let's go back to the boat because we have to leave. <clears throat> Accommodations. So both island hopping and cruises have the um, range of budget to luxury so and everything in between. So cruises, um, the luxury cruises have really big and spacious uh, accommodations. Some of them have private balconies. However, the lower class, class cruises might have limited, more limited space and sometimes they'll have bunk beds and really tight quarters so they're like a really small hotel on water and island hopping we have options that are on the waterfront we have options in the highlands and um, the only thing here is that when you're uh, staying at a hotel sometimes you have to wait a little bit before you can finally get to the activity because you have to get a transfer go to the pier get on the speedboat and then get to your uh, destination for the day tour while on a cruise you've arrived there already in the morning When we're talking about the choice between cruises and island hopping, we really have to make sure that our guests understand um, how they're operated. And that I wanna mention is um, customization and flexibility. A cruise takes care of all the planning and you have set departures and itineraries. So you just have to choose the dates and the itinerary you like that works for your client. The only setback is when the dates aren't flexible and then the cruise that you really wanted isn't available. So that's something that we have to keep in mind that cruise dates are never flexible. They leave on certain days and um, they have itineraries between four to 15 days. So that's something that we can work with. On island hopping, it's a lot easier to customize. You can have either more or less free time, um, more or less activities. But guests themselves should be really flexible um, when it comes to pickup times, transfer times, because these are always subject to, to change. Um, and they're, al they're always in between a time frame of like 10 to 15 minutes or maybe even longer sometimes. So those are important aspects to explain to your clients when they want to do island hopping. And independence. Um, Sometimes we have adults, like I mentioned on Tuesday, that they feel like they're being like treated like children on a cruise. So we have to remember that on a cruise, there's not a whole lot of independence. Um, you might be able to find a sun deck to yourself, but then sooner or later, someone else is gonna come and join you. Um, you have limited space, you're with the same group from morning to evening, 
every single day for however long your itinerary is. But it's great for people who have common interests of wildlife and a passion for nature and for people who are really social. So your only privacy that you're going to have on a cruise is limited to your cabin. And then the guide is constantly um, giving direction and order to the group, where you're going, what you're going to do, the rules. So for someone who is looking for a little bit more adventure and independence, I would say an island hopping is best for them. But then um, when it comes to seasickness and things like that, you can also book a private guide for day tours. So these are some of the important points to take into consideration depending on the independence of your passengers. And of course, cost. Um, cruises are always going to be more expensive than a land-based tour, um, unless they're looking at a luxury uh, island hopping tour, okay? So we have um, a large variety here as well. We have budget, mid-range, first class, luxury, um, but an island hopping is best if the budget is a little bit more limited. Um, in general, no vacation to Galapagos is going to be cheap, but at least staying on the main islands gives them the choice to do exactly what they're looking for. And they do the excursions only of their interest. On a cruise, uh, we have all the different ranges. Um, and when single travelers are looking, sometimes it's possible to get a room that they can share. So um, cruises are also all inclusive with meals, accommodations. Sometimes there's a cruise manager and captains. And you get a kind of special attention that you don't normally get on island hopping. And lastly, connectivity. So the Galapagos are 600 miles uh, away from the mainland of Ecuador, right? So we have to keep in mind that Wi-Fi and connectivity um, is something that we're not going to have on cruises. Even on the largest cruises, um, they might say that they have Wi-Fi, but it's still spotty, it's not 100%, um, and sometimes they even have to be paid separately. So in cases of emergency, um, the only way to make a call or to get email is using satellite phones or satellite internet, and you have to get permission from the captain usually. But on the other hand, cruises are really great for people looking to disconnect. And for island hopping, uh, this is, good for people who might be on uh, doing work or doing some uh, workation. Uh, Wi-Fi is available at almost all hotels. Uh, signals can be weak sometimes, um, so it's not to be relied on if you have homework due or someone is on college vacation, they's, they're doing classes. So um, I've actually had a friend who tried to do that and none of his um, homework was able to be sent so um but if internet and communication is needed this is the best option okay um sometimes clients will tell me so i heard there's no internet in the galapagos or on this cruise but i really want to do it but i'm not really sure so i don't like feeling disconnected what i like to do is um, give them some tips about being disconnected and the benefits. So these benefits include improving your health and happiness, and even improving your productivity when you're returning to work because you totally disconnected and you were refreshed. Kind of like a digital detox. You get to recharge your mind um, and you come back better than before. So the five tips <clears throat> that I usually um, give to others who are asking this question is how do I convince my client to still do the cruise even though there's no Wi Fi? Is to tell them, um, they're going to be completely present in the moments. They don't have anything to distract them. They'll have deeper levels of thought. Um, they'll have ideas come out of nowhere, and they'll also have more meaningful interactions with their family um, or their significant other if they're traveling with someone else. So they'll come back with better memories, and they'll actually come back feeling mentally clear and recharged. So those are really interesting um, viewpoints if you want to help your client figure out what's best or convince them. So in review, I have these pros and cons of the cruise and land-based tours of Galapagos. So I know it's a lot of information, so I tried to compact it here for you, um, and we'll send this to you um, once all of our webinars are done. So you'll be able to have all this information at your hands whenever you need it.
So that's in general everything about um, the factors to consider between land and cruise. And we're going to have our next webinar actually um, next Tuesday with Joanna, uh, who you heard earlier. And it's going to be a really great webinar on the top seven hotspots of Peru. It's going to be at 9 a.m. also. So please join us then um, for this webinar. And thank you once again for joining us. As always, um, I'm really glad that I could be here with you, meeting all of you. Um, it's really great that we're all uh, here together. So make sure you take advantage of this time. Um, do what you have to do for yourself, for your family, for your kids, for work. Um, and we also have a lot of YouTube videos coming out. Um, just search for Gulliver Expeditions. We'll teach you how to make a banana cake, yapping gachos, some um, really yummy Ecuadorian dishes. So please join us for that.